Hello, my name is John Hedengren and welcome to the Process Dynamics and Control course. We're going to be covering uh, the material in Python. We're going to be using primarily Python for this course and here is the course website. So if you just open up a new web browser and come to apmonitor.com slash pdc, it's so a Process Dynamics and Control course and you'll see an overview of the course here on the right side, course information. Uh, with the course overview that we're on right now. You also have the syllabus. it will give a little bit more detail about those enrolled in the class. And then if you come over here to the schedule, it will show you um, the course topics by lecture, by class, and then also the assignments there. So the very first assignment is just to install Python. Uh, if you come on down, you see also some competencies. Those are the things that we want you to take away from the class. And this is a, a accreditation board for engineering and technology, or ABET. Um, and so we try to implement these for the process dynamics control course. If you'd like to tell me a little bit about yourself, here is the info sheet. You can fill that out and tell me a little bit about yourself. There's a playlist there as well. Uh, you can also access this assignments. Uh, that's the same one as the schedule and that tells you uh, the different assignments that we're going to be going through. One of the unique things that we'll be doing with this course is um, you know, a lot of the, um, if you come to the, for example, this is a solving differential equations. If you come down, you'll see some examples and then some exercises. And a lot of these will have the ability to show the solution so you can check your work or see how I did it as well. Okay, so there is um, the overview of just some of the, the, uh, the basics for the course. Uh, we also have some links here for exams and projects. Uh, there will be three exams plus a final exam and one lab, a temperature control lab, and a project. So the project, you can choose uh, your own project in groups of three, and for the lab, we're going to have groups of two. Um, okay, and then uh, here's how the course is, uh, is broken down. We have dynamic modeling. Uh, that we're going to cover some of that material to be able to describe how a system changes with time mathematically and be able to simulate that. And we have some lower order models and other things we're going to be using to approximate systems. We have some things with equipment design, so valve, sensors, and signals, how to make a control system work. And then a controller as well. Okay, so the controller, we're going to be covering mostly proportional integral and derivative controllers, but also cover some more advanced things like cascade, feed forward, and then when we get up to optimal control, some things with model predictive control, optimization, and such. Okay, and so there's some related courses there as well. If you don't feel very comfortable with Python, here's a computational tools class that runs you through uh, some of the uh, Python material that you can cover if you need to go back and, and look at some of the Python. Okay, um, I'm going to go back to um, uh, here and let's just talk about the basics of a control system. The three things that you need for a control system are a sensor and an actuator. And the final thing, the third thing is a controller. So a sensor, we think about a sensor, something that is, uh, is able to observe the world, uh, quantities such as temperature, distance, and other things, and, be, and then that sends the information to a controller. The controller then makes a decision and uh, then makes the change with the actuator. So let's go down through, I just walked through the engineering building today and took a couple pictures just to see if we could find any, uh, any um, things that have combinations of these sensors, actuators, and controllers. So let me go ahead and show you a photo first and you try to pick out which elements this has. Um, okay, so I went here, it, there's a uh, automatic paper dispenser and it says motion activated, okay. Uh, so what kinds of sensors, actuators, or controllers do you see in this? Okay, so the ones that I see, um, I see a sensor right here. It's a distance sensor. Uh, and as I put my hand close to it, it uh, understands that I want to be able to get a paper towel. 
and then the motor goes maybe for a predetermined amount of time and dispenses this towel. Okay, so this is called open loop control. Okay, open loop or manual operation um, where I'm telling it uh, when to operate, not a controller, not a computer. Uh, it's done by a person. Okay, so I want to get this to uh, dispense a paper towel. Okay, but it does have a sensor and it does have an actuator, but I am the controller to tell it when to dispense the paper towel. Okay, let's go on to another one. I was walking down the hall and I saw a thermostat, although this is a fairly old one, and you can see the little temperature reading right there. Uh, there's 70 degrees Fahrenheit, there's 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's right here. Um, and so there's a, the, a thermostat is a controller. Okay, so we have a sensor. Um, it's able to sense the temperature. And then we have uh, an actuator. And that is going to be either a heater during the winter time or an air conditioner during the summer. Okay, so that's going to uh, tell it to turn on or off to be able to adjust the temperature. And the controller, um, well, the controller is this thing right here. This is the uh, the smarts in there. If the temperature is too high or too low, it adjusts the flow rate of air or the operation of the heater or the controller. Okay, so let's go uh, down and do uh, some more. So then I passed this, okay? so. Everybody wants their drinks, uh, you know, a certain temperature. And uh, if you get it too cold, maybe uh, this is going to freeze right here. Okay, so that might be undesirable. Or if you let it get too warm, then people are going to stop coming back to that vending machine to buy things. Okay, so just like the thermostat, you've got a sensor and you're going to be measuring temperature. Okay, you have an actuator, and so the actuator is going to be down here where it's going to tell it to turn on the refrigeration system. And so there you have a, uh, a compressor. Um, and then the controller is going to be um, the, the logic, the computer that's inside this. Okay, maybe right inside here that tells it when to turn on or off the compressor. Okay, so that is our uh, controller. Okay, so you need to have these three elements, a sensor, actuator, and controller for a control system. And we also call this a closed loop uh, control. And because now I'm not telling it when to turn on and off the uh, compressor, but the computer is. And it, does it, it happens automatically uh, in order to be able to maintain the temperature within this system. Okay, let's go on down. Okay, drinking fountain as well. Okay, so how does this a, there's a refrigeration system in here. Again, another temperature controller sensor. It's measuring the temperature of the water in the reservoir inside that drinking fountain. It turns on or off the, uh, the compressor to be able to cool it. And now uh, you have disturbances. Okay, so let's talk about disturbances. Uh, that affect this system when somebody comes and presses this button. Uh, the feed line that comes in here is going to be hot, uh, you know, norm, uh, you know, water that comes from the city. Okay, and then you have a reservoir of water in here and that is going to dispense. And then you're going to have the uh, water shoot out and the person's gonna take a drink, it's gonna be cold water but you're also feeding in this, uh, this hot water right here. So this would be a, a disturbance for our system. So a disturbance is anything that drives the, the, uh, the desired quantity, in this case, the temperature of the water. Uh, it drives that away from a particular set point. Uh, and so if we come back up here to the disturbance, maybe the disturbance is the uh, the ambient temperature, okay, as that changes, or uh, you know, up here maybe somebody leaves a door open um, and lets a bunch of hot air in. Uh, that would be a disturbance for the system, and so it's going to be adjusting the heater uh, or the air conditioner to be able to uh, maintain a set point. 
Okay, so a set point often goes along with the controller. That might be our comfort zone in the in a building. For example, if we want to maintain our building at 72 degrees Fahrenheit, and the temperature is kind of oscillating around that as we turn it on or off, or you have other disturbances that affect the building. Okay, so just a little bit of terminology. We have uh, disturbances, we have a set point, we have a sensor, actuator, and controller for any control system. Okay, let's go on down. Okay, in this course, we're also gonna be covering valves. Okay, this was something I saw in the stairway. This is a, uh, you know, a fire uh, uh, water valve. And so you have, um, in this case, this is the manual operation. You can see the hand crank here. But we're gonna uh, design systems where the computer is going to be able to adjust uh, the valve stem coming in or out of this, uh, this control valve and be able to adjust things like flow. Um, we're also going to be uh, using uh, pumps as well, pumps, valves, um, electrical heaters, other things that are going to be our actuators. Okay, so those are going to be our actuators, our things like valves uh, and pumps, but you could also have other things like motors or switches uh, that turn things on or off and uh, cause a change that the computer can make to the, the system. Okay, so uh, that's just a brief overview of some of the terminology and some of the examples I saw of process control. There are a lot of different process control applications out there today. If we classify these under the general umbrella of automation, automation is becoming a big deal. Um, and so we, uh, you know, the principles that we learn in this class, although they're applicable to chemical engineers, they're also applicable to the more general field of automation. So um, we'll have you work on that as part of your projects. Uh, and so be thinking about a project that you'd like uh, to do. There's, um, if you look at the process control projects, you have uh, 67 of them that I posted here already, but you can uh, certainly think of your own process control project that you'd like to uh, take on. Okay, so that's just a, a brief overview of the course. Uh, some of the uh, terminology that we're gonna be using uh, to talk about uh, process control and dynamics, and uh, some of the, uh, an overview of uh, some of the material in modeling, equipment, and uh, controllers, and then optimal control as well. Okay, so don't forget, here is the uh, list of assignments. And uh, the first thing that's going to be due for next class period is to install Python.